Comme des garçons. Hey, it's Sabrina here, and this is my presentation. Comme des garçons. If we're speaking on Comme des garçons. It starts with Ray Kaukubo. She is it. She is Comme de Garçons. And first fact, Comme de Garçons means like some boys. It's in French. So that kind of has a statement in its own name that she wanted to just go against the grain. Um, a word you're gonna hear a lot is anti-fashion and avant-garde and her stuff was really perceived as negative rather than a positive but they just didn't get it Rei Kawakubo was born in 1942 in Tokyo and her first foot into the industry was in 1961 she was working at a textiles factory and then after that she became a freelance stylist scratch that 1967 she's working in a textiles factory then three years later 1969 she created Comme de Garçon so she just started creating under that line and then in 1973 is when she incorporated and made it like a brand. So, but before all of this fashion, she studied at Kyo University in arts and literature and like aesthetics and art. And another fun fact, that was actually her father's school that she attended. So in Paris, 1981 is when she had her debut show for Comme des Garçons and it was just women's wear. For her first show, she got back like a lot of backlash and negative critics and stuff. Her looks were more of just like, it was just distress. Um, the fabrics and the seams were distressed. They were unfinished. It, they considered it punk because the use of the black and the unusual styles of the clothing. Yeah, in Paris, it just, that wasn't it. That wasn't the taste. But then by her next show, um, she introduced menswear and still really weren't for it. Uh, her next concept was was called Lumps and Bumps. I think that was in the 90s. And it was like, it was like fitted clothes and silhouettes, but there was like bumps coming out of like different parts of it. And people were just like, what does this mean? But she was just like, she, that's a whole thing to get on that. If you see her background, she is like, she's an artist, but she's an artist creating clothes. And you have to remember that. So it's like, it's not completely about the trend. Like she's, she's not, Comme des Garçons is not a trendy brand. It's like, it's like an art installation of its own, but like in clothing. So I feel some of her stuff was judged the wrong way and looked in the wrong light. Um, that's why today and and so many people really look up to her because she was she was on something else. Like she's the designer's designer. So her customer is kind of all over the board, really. When she first was right out of the gates, she was making women's wear. 
and then transition to menswear and then um in the early 2000s and 90s she started doing collaborations um and also just like a uh like like another tier of cdg play um so the thing with play it's it's considered streetwear it's unisex and it's a really good line a lot of people really hopped on to it so it's kind of one of those things open to everybody a lot of celebrities wear her clothing whether it's casually like play and streetwear and collabs or whether it's like her pieces that she designed for the runway here's a list of celebrities Kanye, Carl Lagerfeld, Lady Gaga, Pharrell Williams, and of course, Frank Ocean. Even to uh, Met Gala, she designed some dresses. I think Rihanna and Zendaya. I kind of still am in the topic of customer, because um, when you look at their collaborations for play, it's ultimately like household name brands and street brands so i feel like that kind of shows like the demographic of who it is who's buying but also that's just another tier of it for more of her personal work i would say the customer is more of like an it, they're ageless they're completely ageless it's um Somebody who is artsy, for sure. Somebody who appreciate and enjoys the art. Um, somebody who, with personality, that they let the clothes express beyond them, really. For the play collaborations, um, you have like Nike, Jordan, of course Converse, Supreme, the North Face, um, she had some artists, she had calls in there, Pharrell, um, they had a fragrance together, oh, Levi's, Louis Vuitton, Undercover, uh, Stussy, H&M, a lot, like, that's, that's barely anything, like, there's so many more. In 2016, that was when I think they released the uh, the Comme des Garçons play in Congress collaboration. Uh, excuse me. Everybody went wild for those. Like those are like those were the hype. And when I was like talking to my friends that I was doing a project on Comme des Garçons, a lot of them had the shoes. Like everybody, everybody has the shoes. Um, Sadly, I have nothing of Comme des Garçons, but from learning about her, I totally would be a customer. Marketing and market. So she is the creator of Dover Street Market. She runs that with her husband, Adrian Halfey, if I said that correct. So the signature Comme des Garçons store is open in their market. Um, in 2013 they actually opened a dover street market in new york and they have many locations london um hong kong japan speaking of markets into marketing back in like the 80s and 90s this kind of inspires me ray's ray kawakubo's marketing strategy was pictures like it was like photography and in those pictures it wouldn't have to do with anything of Comme des Garçons it wouldn't have the clothes it would just be an image and it would say Comme des Garçons on it and I was looking through and these pictures were like beautiful like it's it's stuff like you want to have like a whole a whole print of and I feel like they totally age well um, and I feel like 
that's something she could literally come back like create again like make a comeback did i say that right i said that right and in current times cross channel marketing so social media websites and then they have their physical flagship stores they also have gorilla stores so a gorilla store is a store that it's almost like an installation they have it open for like a year and then just normal places and it's kind of like it's a pop-up really they have it open for a year limited stuff limited location and then they just close it down and then on to the next one so they had that all over the world um they're a global brand that's amazing uh oh kind of part of marketing exhibitions so in 2017 they had the Comme des Garçons exhibit in New York City um they had it at the Met that it was like a walkthrough kind of gallery of the clothing um and then also they had uh, some installations like outside and I just wish I was here to see that because it looked crazy like it looked good for the financials I found that yearly they make 280 million in revenue a year almost almost 300 million um, they're a global brand, so that is money from every corner of the world. For the play Comme des Garçons, that line is accessible in department stores, so like you could find it in like Saks and like Bloomingdale's and stuff like that. And then you could also find it in their flagship stores. Um, e-commerce sales too little fact for the dover street market which has other brands along with comme des garçons 10 percent of their revenues from e-commerce so that shows you people still really like going into stores these days and i'm with that strengths that i see for her business is that they're a classic like like I said, she's the designer's designer. So people really look up to her. I don't think she's ever gonna go out of style. Um, she's one of those people that like, what's done has been done. Like her stuff can't be undone. She can't be replaced. She can't be replicated. Um, so I believe that the company is gonna live and stay with her as long as she's here. Um, and even behind, even like beyond her, like, Comme des Garçons is, it's art, to be honest. A weakness I see is that the different tiers of Comme des Garçons, um, so there's Reikau Kubo's, like, women's wear, men's wear, um, and then there's the streetwear, and then there's play. So when you say Comme des Garçons, I feel people have a different image of what the brand is, who it is, kind of just the branding. Immediately, people think of play, which is under, you know, it's Comme des Garçons, but I feel like there's not much appreciation for the work she's done in the past and even now um, I feel it could just get confusing of it being separate and I I find that I wish that you know there would be a way to like make it all into one because then when you think of like the streetwear and collabs people would think of it as hype and it would be it, they might disrespect the brand for looking at you know, a Louis Vuitton bag that she collabed with and not really look at her work um, and like the story and the imagery of her work. She makes art and clothing. So an opportunity I see in modern day sustainability, um, 
that's one thing she could get into, but also, like, I'm for sustainability, but also it's, like, it's her, it's her vision, it's her, she makes what, what she wants to make. Uh, but maybe another opportunity would be to focus on, on maybe, like, the roots, the roots of Comme des Garçons, or have some kind of way to, like, tie them in all together I think that could be a good opportunity to work upon kind of make something new out of what's old I don't believe it's old make something new out of a classic a threat for Comme des Garçons is counterfeits people love to counterfeit the play a bunch of the clothing and the shoes from play like there is there's groups out there to show you how to not find a counterfeit Comme des Garçons play there's people who want to counterfeit of course uh, the collabs always I mean you've probably seen counterfeit Supreme like crazy um, so there could be counterfeit Comme des Garçons in Supreme uh, competition I feel people are getting more out of the box which is pretty good these days but I don't think anybody would beat her out because it's already it's already been done like she is like she reigns over those ideas she's the queen of that but you know more people are entering the chat if you know what I mean a threat is that people really only focus just on the streetwear. Like I said, of the, the tiers of Comme des Garçons. Um, but also it's like to each their own. <sighs> Recommendation for Comme des Garçons is that to this day, there's still a private label. Um, if you look up anything, Ray Kawakubo is the president, and it's gonna be like that. Uh, so she still has creative control, and I think that's amazing. I think that's how it should be done, really, when you have a brand so personal to you, almost like in your name and what you believe. So it's great that she kept it like that. Um, also, it's when I heard the topic of recommendation, I also thought, are you recommending it to like a customer or like, you know, a friend or something like, how would you recommend this brand? So then I thought, hmm, if I had to recommend Comme des Garçons to somebody, I would say that it's Comme des Garçons is anti-fashion and it's for somebody who sees art before they see clothing. Um, somebody who's innovated in, in design and they see, they see it as pieces and concepts. Like I said, not on trend. Um, I totally, I totally rock a piece. Um, but it's like if if you're that kind of person who just wants like a collection a collection of something different not to walk out the house and you know the casual you want to be in a piece but uh in conclusion this was my Comme des Garçons presentation um thank you